Hello everyone, I'm planning to start a series on SAP UI5 development. So I'll start with the basics and gradually walk you through building more complex applications using SAP UI5. Uh, this whole series of videos will be loosely based on tutorials uh, that are already found in the SAP UI5 demo kit. Uh, so you can go to SAP UI5 demo kit. You can search for that SAP UI5 demo kit. And once you go there, uh, right at the documentation, uh, you can click on tutorials and you can get a list of all the tutorials that are available. Uh, so I'll start with these tutorials and then once we reach advanced stages, I will focus on layouts, routing, and more complex uh, anal analytical list page and so on. Uh, for now though, uh, I want to start off with this tutorial, the data bindings. So if you go through this uh, tutorial series, uh, there is a whole bunch of uh, tutorials already there. Uh, so in this video, I'll cover maybe about half of uh, the tutorials here, and then the rest half I will cover in the next uh, next session and then I'll gradually walk you through other tutorials here as well and then we'll start building more complex business applications. Okay, so uh, what do we need to get started? Uh, so first of all, you need to get an account in SAP Cloud Platform. Uh, so this is uh, free, uh, so you don't even need a credit card. Uh, simply provide your email and your contact information and you should have an account in no time. Um, so once you have this account, uh, you can go to hanatrial.ondemand.com and then you'll be presented with this page. And what we want to do for our development is we want to use the SAP Web IDE. Now, um, you don't have to install anything on your local machine for us to build SAP UI5 applications. Everything can be done on the web. So you can click on this Launch SAP Web IDE, and this will launch your Web IDE like this. Um, now, you can have uh, multiple workspaces. So uh, right now, this is my workspace. Uh, I have uh, SAP UI5 tutorials. Yours will say workspace. Uh, but say if you have like 10, 15 projects here, and then you want to create a new workspace, then you can come here, and then you can create, go to Workspace Manager and create a new workspace if you want to. Like, uh, so you can create multiple workspaces. So in my case, I'm going to start with the new workspace called SAP UI5 Tutorials. Uh, but in your case, you can go with uh, the stand, the, the, the one that says Workspace. Okay, so let's go ahead and start a project. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a project based on a sample template. And this provides like a very empty project. So let me just go project from template. And let's choose this uh, SAP UI5 application. And this is going to create a pretty empty application. So let's go ahead and say next. And let's call this data binding one. And let's give a namespace of com.sap. And then it asks you for the view type. Let's leave the view type as XML. And as far as the app view name is concerned, I always like to call it app, the very first view. And let's go ahead and finish it. So at this time, a blank application is created for you. Uh, so uh, once this uh, visit completes, you'll be presented with a blank application. Now, once we have this blank application, then we can, so we have the blank application. So let's go ahead and look at all the files in here. I typically, I've never written a test case, so I'm going to delete this uh, folder so we don't need this. Um, now, there are two ways of launching this application. Uh, one is through index.html, which is what we'll be doing. Uh, but if you do deploy this application to the Fury Launchpad, then the component.js takes over. Uh, but for now, let's see what index.html does. Uh, so we see that on init, it initializes the component support. And then we place in this div uh, the view that is created here. Okay, so uh, let's see what happens if we run this application. So let's right click on this index.html 
and let's go run run as web application and you see that it is uh, going to provide you with a title oh so let's see how this title came about right uh, so we have this uh, kind of a shell uh, looking uh, uh, view with the title in here uh, so let's see how this title came about now the view so in sap ui5 there is a kind of a good separation for mvc so the view files are all xml based uh, you can also have different types like javascript as well but we'll focus mostly on xml based files for the view so the all the view elements are in this app.view.xml so this page here uh, the view is the one that's responsible for creating this uh, right this page right here and we want to investigate how we got this title and if you look at this page there is something called title and then i18n title so this i18n is the model by itself this is called the resource model now this is used for localization so if i would uh, go ahead and hit f12 here to bring up my chrome browser tools and then if i would go into my network and if I just uh, hit refresh again uh, then you will see that there are some files it's looking for i18n uh, for English properties and i18n for US properties as well uh, and it can't find these two files and then it looks like it defaults to this i18n dot properties and if you look at this view file here, that's where the title is coming from. So the title is coming from i18n proper, uh, this file right here, and title. So let's uh, kind of investigate what this uh, file has. And if I open i18n properties, I see this file with some text and values. So there's this title and it says equals title and we notice that our title here is title so let's do this let's call this my data binding project okay so let's call this my data binding project and let's go ahead and run this again and let's see what happens so we have my data binding project and we know that it is coming from here and the way you are binding this title to the title of this application is using the syntax i18n and this title now how does uh, the sap ui5 application know where this i18 file resides so for that we go into manifest.json so this file and this file if you go down a little bit below you see that there is a model called i18 that's already specified so this all came with the uh, with the template that we used and it's telling that hey uh, this is the name of my model for resource model uh, so it gives it a name and then it says uh, that it is in this folder like com.sap data binding one now this folder resolves to the location of index.html so this one uh, so if you look at the index.html what we are saying is uh, this anytime you see this this resolves to where i am where index.html is so going to manifest.json it tells that my i18 file is right here and that's where it's getting this uh, file this value from now we notice that um, when we load it it's actually looking for i18 underscore n properties for english uh, because my browser settings are in english if my browser settings was, were in spanish it would look for es like for spanish properties uh, but for now it's looking for this file and since it can't find this is like the fallback option so let's see let's see what will happen if we create this file so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a file and i'm going to call it i18n underscore en dot properties uh, properties i spelled it incorrect
And what I'll do is I will take the values from here and let me throw it into this file. And so I can differentiate, let me call this English. So my i18n underscore en dot properties, this file is going to be called English. So now let me go ahead and refresh this page and let's see what happens. So it now finds this i18en file. So it uses the English, it doesn't uh, fall back to the i18 dot n properties file, but rather uses the English file. And what I can also do is uh, I can also be even more specific and I can create the, another file called i18n underscore en underscore us dot properties. And let me throw in these values again. And this time I will call it English US. And now if I refresh my screen, I see it is going to be English US. Now this is good if you're going to build a global project covering multiple languages. So once you build your application, uh, you can ask uh, the translating company to translate all these key value pairs. Uh, so if you wanted Chinese, you can send this file to the Chinese translation company and they can translate these values for in Chinese and then voila, your application will be localized. Okay, so we have localization right off the bat. Now let's talk about, uh, let's talk about uh, the actual data binding itself. Now this is one type of data binding for resources, but let's talk about data binding in our application itself. Say, let's say we have a text, something like this. So we have a text, text equals, my name is Milton. And at this time there is absolutely no uh, binding. So we are just hard coding this value and uh, the text property now has this value. So if I go ahead and if I refresh, now I will see my name is Milton. So there is no data binding here. So let's uh, introduce some data binding concepts. So for that, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create a new folder called data. And within data, I'm going to create a file with my information in it. So let me go ahead and create a new file and I'll call it myinfo.json. And this is going to be in JSON format. So let me go ahead and create this file with my information in it. So you see, I have a name, Milton City Atlanta Company SAP. So I have this file right here. Now let's go ahead and try and bind these values to, my, uh, to these UI controls. Uh, so a couple of ways of doing it. Uh, so the way I'd like to do it is I want to go ahead and create a JSON model that has these values and then bind the UI controls to this JSON model. So I go into manifest.json. Now look here, we had this resource model. So we'll create something like this for our JSON model. So we this is the default model and I'll come to this and this doesn't have any name. Um, so I will talk more about it later on. Uh, but for now, what I'm going to do is I am going to create this uh, default model and I will explain what it does. So right now we have uh, the URI that is pointing to this default model and it's going to point to, oops, I need that. Okay, and it's going to point to data, that's the photo that I created, and then myinfo.json, so that's where my file resides. And this type, I'm specifying it as a JSON model. So right now I'm not even going to bind it to my UI controls, I'm just going to run it and see if the application, oops, if the application uh, goes and loads this JSON file. 
So you can see that my info.json got loaded by the application. So just by virtue of putting these lines in this uh, manifest.json file, now you can see that my manifest my info.json file got loaded. And now it's part of my default model because there is no name. Now, if I had another JSON file, say if I had like my info2.json file, uh, and I wanted to do this, then I would have to give another name. Like I would have to give a name for that, like uh, uh, model one or model two, and then provide the URI and the type. So right now there's only one, so I can have the default model. Okay, now I want to go ahead and bind my UI controls to this uh, JSON model that I have created. Uh, so let me go ahead and create this text right here, and that will allow me to bind this. So instead of uh, all this, I'm going to throw in this values here. So label first name and value, uh, notice how I'm binding it. I'm just saying first name. So I'm going to bind my first name. Oh, this is no first name, first name. And then I'll have a last name also. And then so I have my first name and my last name bound to this input value. So let's see what happens. OK, so we have first name, Milton got bound from the data model, and my last name also got bound from my data model. So what I'll do is uh, this has taken more time than I expected. So I'll stop this, and in my next session, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this binding. Thank you.